You know, one of the problems that I have right now is that we are 17 months removed from the insurrection. And these hearings are happening a handful of months before midterm elections. And I know that the Justice Department doesn't work on our political cycle. The reality is that Merrick Garland, you know, on the anniversary of the insurrection, told the American people that he was going to follow the evidence. He was going to go where things took him. Can you explain to us, Neil, why it has taken this long? And if, in fact, these hearings, because, again, I am a person who is pretty cynical uh, in comparison to Waj, I'm, and I think that that's probably taking it lightly. Um, why it's taken this long? Why they were able to put together, for instance, a task force to take down Russian oligarchs, and there was not the same task force, or at least announced, to put together to take down the architects, the funders, the donors of this insurrection. Why, why do I see or feel such imbalance in yeah. how things are moving? Yeah, so I think it's a great question, and I think it comes down a lot to Merrick Garland. And I, I'm someone who actually does have a lot of faith in him. He's brilliant. He's really careful. He's like the opposite of the jokers who ran the Justice Department for the last four years. And the last thing we want is to take some of their you know, modus operandi and put it into the Garland Justice Department. So it's a good thing to me that we're not hearing leaks from the Justice Department on, oh, they've got a criminal case against Trump or they got a criminal case against, you know, whomever, um, you know, Mark Meadows or whatever. I think that's a great thing that the Justice Department is doing its work the way it's supposed to in a high level criminal investigation, which is to do it, uh, you know, behind the scenes until there's an indictment. Now, Garland has said, you know, he's got nobody high or low is going to be removed from, you know, the criminal look that he's going to give to everyone involved with January 6th. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much all I think we can expect from him to say now. It's also complicated because you have two investigations. You have something going on with the Justice Department. We don't know exactly what that is. And then you have a separate investigation going on in Congress. Um, one of the things I tried to write about in the New York Times article was, well, why would it be that we haven't had the Justice Department moving in the year and a half, as you know, mm -hmm. all your questions about? And one theory may be that Garland decided, look, Congress was going to investigate, and you know, it was an attack on their soil, their people, it's their Capitol Police, and so on. Of course, they're going to have to investigate. Maybe Garland decided, let them investigate first, go first. And then I'll pick up the file afterwards. And we've seen some signs that actually that may be what's going on because the Justice Department has made a, a high level request yeah. for documents, mm -hmm. all documents from Congress, which is what you'd expect if this theory I floated in the Times um, is right. But we don't know for sure. Obviously, we all kind of want the show moving on the road. The Justice Department isn't hampered by the same November election mm -hmm. deadline that you mentioned. Um, you know, obviously, if Congress changes hands, I think, you know, the Republican Party doesn't seem interested at all in as a party in getting to the truth of what happened on January 6. It's all cover up lies, innuendo and the like. So, you know, I think instead of investigating, you know, one of the most horrific uh, attacks on our nation and its capital in our history, we'll be investigating, you know, Hunter Biden's laptop and Benghazi for 24 hours a day and banning books, you know, and, I, I and also stick trying with to impeach Biden, <laughs> <laughs> oh, which Ted Cruz, by the way, already uh, said that they will do if the Republicans take the House. So they're already tipping off their hat and telling you that we're going to get investigations on Hunter Biden and impeachment of Joe Biden. Why? Who knows? But we'll see. But sticking with the Justice Department, Neil, uh, in your op ed piece, you said that the audience, right, the audience for these hearings in addition to the American public, in, in addition to posterity and history, is the Justice Department. And in the article itself, you kind of give the Justice Department two ideas. And one of them is, you know, you can get Donald Trump uh, on obstruction of an official proceeding. Can you break that down for the audience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and certainly I just want to be clear, it's not my idea. It's well in the ether. And in fact, it's one of the two crimes that the federal judge, uh, Judge Carter, flagged. And the Congressional Committee has already, Liz Cheney has gone on the airwaves and says, I think Donald Trump violated the statute 1512C, um, which says that if you conspire to obstruct, uh, to stop 
some sort of official proceeding, uh, that is a very serious federal felony. And one of the, I think the kind of paradigmatic official proceeding they had in mind was a court proceeding. Uh, you know, you're trying to stop a criminal trial from taking place or something like that. But the language, of course, is much broader intentionally to govern all official proceedings. And January 6th is obviously mm. one of the most solemn official proceedings that the United States ever has, which is the idea that on that date, you take the electoral votes that have been sent up by the states, you open them up, you count them, and you declare a president. And what Donald Trump's strategy was to say, oh, instead of sending the actual slate of electors that different states had picked, um, we'll name some alternate electors, um, which isn't, of course, a thing. Alternate electors are like alternative facts. There's no <laughs> such thing. Um, but, <clears throat> but that was Trump's theory. And by sending this random group of guys, and maybe a few women, probably not given it's Trump, but uh, that random slate of people to the Capitol, They'll open it and they'll have two rival ones. And then Vice President Pence can say, well, we're going to pick the randos as opposed to the people that were actually. And the elected. randos just coincidentally Trump all happen to be Trump supporters. And we'll give exactly. the election to Trump. Just, just coincidentally. coincidentally. Exactly. Watch. And, and, you know, one of the things the hearing showed is that John Eastman, that legal architect behind this, he actually knew that the fake electors had no legal standing. That's in his emails. But he argued that their presence would create uncertainty about which results were legitimate. I have no idea where this uncertainty was supposed to come from. I mean, one set of electors is certified by the legislature. The other is a bunch of randos who haven't been. There's no uncertainty. It's like, you know, the show Billions. I am not uncertain. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, one of the other issues that we that we continue to see, right, is this pardon parade. Donald Trump was giving out pardons like they were, you know, hot, hot tickets to the latest the, the the latest club opening. Only if you're a Trump supporter, though, right? right. So like Dinesh but, D'Souza gets it, Bannon gets it, you know, Mike Flynn gets it. You know, it's it's all the rogues around him. But you know, what like ordinary your, people like who yeah. needed pardons, right? You know, but yeah. yeah, exactly. What the president is actually supposed to do, which is pardon people that were wrongly incarcerated and tell us their stories and wrong, you know, make right what the Justice Department has done wrong. That was not the case. Obviously, my question, though, is that it's clear, or at least to me, and I want to know your opinion, as John Eastman was saying fifth, fifth, fifth over, you know, 150 times during uh, during his testimony. It's evident that he didn't get a pardon, right? What, what do you? What did you surmise from his extensive use of pleading the fifth, and then just you know cutting that in half because that's how often he was going to say it, as opposed to Ivanka, Jared, Giuliani, who all didn't plead the fifth in their in their testimony before the the commission. Yeah, well, part of it may be that Jared and Ivanka have just grown up thinking that they're untouchable and the law will never apply to them. So there's a kind of hyper arrogance about them. There may be Eastman who didn't grow up with that kind of, you know, double silver spoon in his mouth, you know, doesn't have. Um, so that may be one rationale um, for it. Another may be that there's a secret set of pardons that Trump wrote out on a napkin and, you know, gave to them um, and only gave to Javanka and didn't give to Eastman. Um, it's certainly possible. I don't think a secret pardon will work in any event. I think the constraint on the pardon power is that it has to be public. Um, I don't think you can just do this in secret because um, I think the whole architecture of the Constitution is to say, you know, uh, the president is where we concentrate accountability and he has these massive suite of powers like the pardon power, but it's because he acts with the eyes of the nation upon him. And so if you can eliminate that and permit secret action of such grave consequence, I think you undo what the limited government and separation of powers is about. I, I want to do a call back to the first hearing where one of the biggest bombshells was that the Republicans, who we still don't know, were proactively seeking pardons after January 6th. And I'm very curious, number one, who are these Republicans who are proactively seeking pardons? And number two, you know, I'm a recovering attorney, Neil. I haven't practiced for 10 years, but I'm assuming that if someone's seeking a pardon, they probably mm. know they've done something wrong. 
and criminal. And, and, and I'm very curious how far this conspiracy extends. And, and it brings me back to another point in your, in your article, because we are talking about accountability and we are talking about, we're hoping, inshallah, as we say, the Justice Department follows the evidence. Um, you also iterate, in, in addition to obstruction of justice, excuse me, obstruction of a, an official pr- proceeding, you say in your piece that the Justice Department could also bring a seditious conspiracy charge against Trump. And just to remind people that Justice Department has done some work, specifically they've charged the Oath Keepers Mm -hmm. and the Proud Boys, these two far-right violent groups, with seditious conspiracy. Uh, How could that be applied to Trump with what we know? Yeah, so um, with respect to seditious conspiracy, uh, it's a tough argument, which is what I said um, in the piece, because it requires actually intending violence or force. Um, and Trump may have a defense that says, look, I was engaged in a lot of shenanigans and on trying to create legal uncertainty with the fake electors and so on, but I didn't actually want violence. Um, and he probably did, is my gut, if you had to hook me up to a truth detector and ask what I think, um, you know, but... I think my belief and well, Neil, I'm sorry if I could just stop, pause you for one second. Sorry, sorry. Just, just for another bombshell from yesterday was that quote where apparently Mike Pence he found out that Mike Pence was, uh, you know, they were 40 feet away from Mike Pence, the mob, and they were hunting him. And he said, "Well, maybe he deserves it." I mean, maybe is that, he, maybe no, maybe maybe they're right. May, is as that they're enough? Chanting, hang, hang, hang Mike it Pence. It could be. It could be. So, you know, I want to, you know, as a, if, if we're going to make a criminal case out of it, if the, word, if the Justice Department is to make a criminal case out of it, I think it's got to be, you know, it's got to, it, it's got, that's got to be really nailed down with eyewitnesses um, and the like. Um, and it may be enough to, to do that. I mean, you've got a president who's maybe actively seeking the murder of his own vice president because he didn't, you know, do his bidding uh, on this bogus election theory. Um, on the other hand, you know, seditious conspiracy is a really hard charge to prove. And so, you know, my only point in the piece was to say there's another flavor of conspiracy, just straight out conspiracy to defraud the United States, um, which is easily applicable here um, because basically, you know, Trump was engineering fake elector slates to be sent um, with the hope of trying to bolster his case to be the president. And if you, uh, you know, if you send a fake document, you know, fake W-2 or something like that to the IRS, you get thrown in jail. Um, It should be obviously no different when the consequences are not just individual tax ones, but ones that uh, really go to the heart of our democracy. Um, And I I guess that's one of the things that really bothers me about the whole discussion, because, you know, if this were anyone else, of course, this would be a criminal investigation. The person would be in jail. I I just think about like, you know, why my parents came to this country from India. One of the main reasons was they saw a culture of people who get away with it at the top and that level of corruption. Bribery. They could come here and... You know, you'd have the same rule book. It didn't matter. Nobody was above the law, high or low. I mean, one of my first memories with, with, with my parents was watching Nixon resign. And I remember my mom crying. And, you know, and I asked her what was going on. She said, the president has resigned. And she was sad about the event. She wasn't particularly partisan. She was sad to think that, you know, this happened, but also happy that it happened. Mm-hmm. That in this country, even the president would be brought to justice. And I don't know how you run a justice system for 300 million Americans when you see Trump getting away with these grave crimes and people being locked up for the most minor things whatsoever in the rule book being thrown at them. 